Blending bracketed exposures in Photoshop is often the only way to achieve high-end results when photographing landscapes at sunrise or at sunset because no matter how good your camera is, sometimes it's impossible to capture all the brightness levels of a high contrast scene in a single image. So in this video, I'm sharing the three levels of exposure blending from beginner through to advanced level so you can see where you're at and potentially up your game and start getting more professional looking results. Starting with level one, automatic blending. This is where we give Lightroom, Photoshop or another third party application our bracketed images and it does all the hard work for us. Sounds great, right? Well, not always. With this method, we hand over control of which parts of which exposures get blended together to the software and we just take the results that it churns out. And that's not to say that it's automatically bad and we should never use it. For totally motionless scenes with zero movement between the bracketed shots, it's probably the best option at least 80% of the time. But for most natural landscape scenes, especially any containing moving water, or where there's something gently swaying in the wind or the clouds are moving across the sky, you really want to take that control back and only blend in the parts that you want to blend from each exposure. Why? Well, aside from the ghastly results that automated processes can potentially give with the wrong settings selected, the main reason is that it probably won't end up keeping the parts from each exposure that you actually want to keep. Like in this example, where all I want to do is use the lighter exposure to brighten the dark rocks in the foreground. So I'll show you the result using Merge to HDR Pro in Photoshop. So we've got something to compare against. Now, having first opened both images in Photoshop and selecting Merge to HDR in the menu, and then clicking Add Open Files and OK. On this screen, firstly, I'm going to say stay the hell away from the local adaptation option unless you want to go back to 2006 for your HDR look. I recommend selecting Exposure and Gamma from the menu and then click OK. So let's examine the result. At first glance, not too bad, but Look a little closer and we can see what's happened where the waves went in front of the sun over here on one of the exposures and we have this weird red artifact in the blended result. But also look at the water in the foreground. Photoshop has mostly used the water from the light exposure and as a result it's done something weird to the contrast because look how flat it appears compared to the dark exposure's water. And this is not my cup of tea at all. So let's look at a more effective method of blending these two exposures together, which brings us on to level two, basic manual layer masking. With some relatively simple layer masking techniques, you can essentially paint the parts you want to keep from each exposure. So let's see what that looks like in this two bracketed exposure example. First, let's get both exposures into the same document. and then make sure the dark exposure is on top in the layers panel. Then we'll add a layer mask to the top layer. And now with a black brush, let's brush into these dark rocks in the image and see how the lighter layer beneath is starting to be revealed. And we can brush in as much or as little as we like here, changing the strength of the brush with its opacity. And the result here is much better. So. Basic layer masking gives you so much more control over your finished exposure blend than the automated way, and that can be all that's required for a really good result. However, this method can lack a bit of accuracy when working along fine edges and leave you painting over the lines with your brush into parts you didn't want to blend and causing weird results that can sometimes look badly edited. If you want to really level up your results, then you'll want to be using luminosity masking techniques for the ultimate control over your exposure blends. So here we are at level three, luminosity masking. This is similar to regular layer masking, but with one extra buff that adds ultimate control over what you're masking in or out from each exposure. So think of luminosity masking like using a stencil where you're spraying through a stencil with a can of paint and that stencil restricts your paint to within certain areas. So it's almost impossible to paint over the lines. And now imagine a stencil being generated from the brightness levels of the image itself, giving you the ability to brush in, say, only the light parts of the sky or only the dark shadows that are underexposed in the image, or to be able to brush right up to the very edge of something without painting over the lines. Now it is an advanced technique and it can be confusing at first, but this next video describes it all clearly by walking you through blending two exposures using luminosity masks, and it's designed to be understood by anyone, even if you've never used luminosity masks before.